Okay, go. Cool. All right, guys. Welcome back to Theme Park Wizard. We're here with back with Orange Girl 55, Christopher, and newcomer Jalen Moore. Who's been on another video with me before. Um, so, Jalen, all about you today. <laughs> you want to talk about and I like the Mickey shirt, by the way. But you Thank said you, you want to talk Jurassic World first. Stop, tell me yes. your thoughts. So last night I seen that the area was open, but the ride wasn't open, and I was just like, "Okay, this they can't be doing this to us." You you literally like there's nothing else to do. Literally nothing else to do. Just open the ride, just open everything, and I will be down there. Like I can't. I don't even think I can see myself just going walking in the area and not getting on the ride. Like it doesn't work like that. I need to be a part of. It needs to be a part of everything. So, yeah, I, <laughs> Just really pumped. You know, I, I saw pictures of it online, like the area and stuff. It looks great. They really, yeah. really they really spruced it up a lot, man. Yeah, they they took time to actually show people that they could they could get on Disney's level, I guess. Which they're not really on Disney's level because it's a small theme park, but they try they try it. They're trying. <laughs> yeah, it looks great, you know, especially the new Isla Nubar area and the, all the rocks, the rocks that lead right into the arch and the fire that's going to be put on there. I think it looks great place to sit. I always used to love to sit down and relax by the old area. So I think I'm going to love to sit down and relax by this and, area. Too. And I think it's little things that you notice that separate itself. Like if you notice, it's two levels now. So there's a stairway to go up to Jurassic Outfitters. And there's a stairway to go to Jurassic Cafe, I believe. But that, just little details, that just makes the whole land even better. Like, who would have ever thought having two levels to a, a one-level area would, you know, it sets, it sets the bar for what could be really great. Yeah, I have to ask you guys a question, because I'm not as familiar with Universal as I am with Disney. <clears throat> Was that one little, there, there's like a, I guess there's a, a like a cage of, so there's like a cage next to the drop, and I guess one of the dinosaurs is in there. Is that new, or is that always there? Well, before it was, it's it's supposed to be the raptor encounter. So you're gonna, it's a meet and greet with the Velociraptor from the movie Blue. Um, before it was there, but it wasn't like a full cage like how it, how they have it now. It was just like a, a like a little facade, and it was like raptor encounter. Come take a picture, and you stand under the archway, you take a picture with the raptor. But I guess now since it's like a whole Jurassic World, they had to go bigger and better. So they built a whole, that whole cage that you see is actually, you can see it in the movie. It's where they actually hold the raptors in the movie. So um, I guess the universe was like, well, let's actually build the cage. And so it's for the, it's a meet and greet for, to take pictures with the Velociraptor. I, I really like that. It adds a lot to the area. I think it looks great. Yeah, that, it does, yeah. I agree. In that raptor encounter, if you look at the cage, there's two doors. Makes me think it says door two and three. Makes me think we're going to get to meet some more dinosaurs than just blue, which would be very exciting. Yeah, and I wonder what they're going to do with the, because there was a number, number one is still there. Like there was the number one, mm -hmm. number two, and the number three. And a lot of people are saying that the number one is going to be a Triceratops movie, which I really hope is coming. <laughs> And I like all the new signage. They have the permanent sign for the raptor encounter, but I'm the style of the sign for like Dino Play and a Jurassic uh, the wor World logo sign. It's all very like modern and clean. Love it. Yeah, they definitely um, want you to know that you're in Jurassic Grove. <laughs> so, so guys, what, like, what, what are they doing to this attraction exactly? Like, I know they're adding, they're gonna add like the new the new hybrid dinosaur right into this attraction. Like, what what are they doing exactly though outside of that? Like, what what's going on with this uh, upgrade? Basically, you want to talk Ethan or what? Oh, okay. Um, well, the so at the end, that new hybrid dinosaur and the T Rex are gonna um, <laughs> fight. Oh, and Jalen, I I listened to the recording, and you're right, it's super loud. So, Chris, at the end. You know, when you come down the escalators and you can hear the drop, at that drop, you can hear it now the T Rex roaring from the outside. Really loud. It's oh, that that's cool. Loud. As they, um, as I assume, assume they'll be fighting, like the new hybrid dinosaur will come try to get you, and the T Rex will save you this time. And at the beginning, though, they, I, I 
if you know, I don't know if you know, but they enclosed the, uh, they made a new show building right when you go up the first little, little hill. And <laughs> apparently that's where the problem is currently is when the, how do you say it, Mosasaurus? Yeah, that thing, the water, the big water dinosaur, their boat is supposed to move to the side as it, uh, it's, you know, pound, you're in the aquarium and it pounds the, the glass and then they have this mechanism where the boat moves to the side and that's where the problem currently is it's holding up this opening as the the boats um, are kind of sinking as that's happening so they're trying to fix that but that's at least the two of the new things that i know that's um are supposed to happen that, that's pretty cool and so it'll be so it'll be it'll be like a mix of they're going to do like animatronic and they're going to do some screens so it'll be like kind of a mix of both yeah right. usually the only screen will probably be the 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 mosasaurus because that thing is humongous but the rest would be animatronics so and, and the the mosasaurus is that that water that water creature that yes, giant yeah animal? the huge looks like a crocodile on crack that's what it looks like <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's what it looks like but um yeah that and um i heard news too that the actors from the original Jurassic world movie are going to be on the ride too so I'm sure they're going to be on some type of projection of, or some sort, or probably, it may just be audio, maybe like them talking, and you know, yeah, it could be. but there are, they are, Bryce Dallas Howard and Chris Pat and uh, B.D. Wong are supposed to be, supposed to be on the ride. So that's nice. You know, this is a great idea. This is smart of Universal because what they're doing is they're, they're kind of, they're, they're kind of re, they're giving this, this old attraction. It's like, it's like 20 something years old. They're giving it new life, you know? Right. It's, 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 it's going to set its, its place at Universal for, for dec more, decades to come now. And I think, right. I think it's smart, really. It's cool. Yeah. And, and it was a well overdue time because if you notice the last couple of times Jurassic Park was there, the animatronics were like really like glitchy, like they would they would like really like stop and go, like they weren't they weren't they weren't lifelike anymore, and yeah. and some of the animatronics weren't even like it, it got so bad that some of the animatronics weren't even there. They they just took them out. They didn't even like yeah. work on them and put them back. They just took them out. They're like, oh, we're building a new ride. Let's just take them out. Like it slowly. And my favorite day, you notice animatronics were disappearing. And my wow. favorite Jeep, my favorite Jeep. When it's never work anymore, then oh, you know, yeah. like, fell off the side of the building. I thought that was the coolest thing. How it just shoo, and never works anymore. But I like Universal's direction and how they're going away from the the screens, like with the Secret Life of Pets. You can see that they're building specific show scenes inside them. That they're going to fill with some animatronics. So I'm, that's why I'm actually excited for the Secret Life of Pets ride too, even if it's just the family ride, because it won't be like a minions where you sit there and you watch the screen the whole oh, so okay so 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 pets is actually going to be like a dark ride there's not going to be screen yeah anymore. i think it's rumored to be like an omni mover yeah. type of attraction really and, but you can see if you look right now you can see as they're building the facade they're building like little showrooms where you, there, you see they're going to place animatronics and you can set it's a two-level track so it's like a two-story thing and it looks pretty cool so i'm and next year i'll be excited to go ride that one that's that is pretty cool i'm glad that universal is getting into more practical practical sets practical effects that, that's pretty right. awesome man. they needed yeah. that because before it was just like universal is all about movies and shows and simulators and all that but they're starting to realize uh if you want to get on disney's level you got to do some other stuff besides just screen projections and stuff you got to step your game up so mm -hmm. besides because right now all their money I, in my opinion all their money is going down to the lower lot. Everybody, everybody, all the thrills, all the, the roller coasters and stuff is in the lower lot. And so it's like you you got to create attention in the upper lot so people could be like, oh, let's do this first instead of having to go all the way down to the lower lot. Because people, that's what people want to do when they go to university. They want to do the lower lot first and then come back up and do the upper lot. Mm -hmm. it's, like, it's like for Disney, it's like for Disney, you go, you go to Tomorrowland, you do all the thrill stuff first, and then you want to do the, the lower level stuff, you come back to Fantasyland. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, which reminds me, Universal and I, Kai, I think I messaged them on Twitter. They're very good at responding on Twitter. But the, the, I love them. But there's, the, you know, if you're the little kid area, super silly fun land. And right next to there is the smoking area. 
but there's a perfect yeah. spot right next to Transformers at the exit, as there as it where usually for horror nights it's usually opened up and you go towards the back one. But if you go, get out of Transformers, make a left, there's a big open space that no one uses. That's the perfect smoking area. I yeah, keep telling them. Why do you put a smoking area where like five year olds are playing on the water slide when you can, you know, have it be? And then also, if you want to go look at the view over there, you, if you're just a normal person, you're just interrupted by all this smoking. It's like a horrible, horrible spot for a smoker. I, I wonder if think that too. Yeah. I wonder if they're going to follow Disney's lead and and uh and get rid of smoking altogether eventually. Yeah, I hope so. It's not that big of a place. <laughs> they will. Yeah. So, so let's talk about the king of all theme parks. Let's talk about some Disney. What's going on? Any news uh, besides Marvel Land, or what, what? What's your thoughts on Marvel Land? That's what I want to know. Marvel Land, I think, is a good addition to California Adventure. You know, um, if they're going to go the route that we think they're going to go, which is basically an Avengers campus in Southern California, it fits the theme. It's a popular franchise. Uh, I think it's a good fit. I, I just hope my only worry with Marvel Land is I just hope they put the money into it and make it really impressive because they set the bar so high now with Batu, the Galaxy's Edge, that like they, they spent like you know like a like a bajillion dollars on Galaxy's Edge that they they can't do Marvel Land now and have it like ha you know like like a yeah. half effort. You know, you got to go all the way. So I'm just hoping that when they do Marvel Land, they go full on. They give it the Galaxy's Edge treatment and give us really immersive, really cool Marvel rides. If they do that, I think it's gonna be a massive success. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I heard it, I, I guess this is the second phase because the first phase was uh, a mission breakout. But <laughs> even then, you you have only a year to open up this somewhat, somewhat of a campus. You have to go hard, like you have a year, that's not a lot of time, you gotta give it all you can give because you you see what you do with Gox's Edge. You see what you did there. Now you you want to make this land so good that you're gonna to have to make appointments to get in, like how you did with Gox's Edge, because that's how good Gox's Edge was, right? It was so good that they had to give appointments because they knew it was gonna to be too many people to just open to the public. So you got to do the same thing for Marvel Land, because it's almost the same attention span. Yeah, I agree. I agree. Marvel is 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 Disney's, if not one of Disney's uh, biggest. It's the biggest franchise right now, at least that they have. You got to give it. You got to give it the love it deserves in, in the theme parks. You, you got to do it. You know. Right. And Star Wars got the appropriate amount of love, and Marvel, I think, should get the same. Yeah. And, and I must say, it's partly the city of Anaheim's fault here, because. Uh, Marvel was originally the answer to all the crowds for Galaxy's Edge, but because the Anaheim blocked the Eastern Gateway, they had to rejigger all their plans and rethink all their ideas. And now it's opening later than anticipated. But um, I hope they're, um, I, I, I believe, especially if they, I think uh, Fresh Baked is right with the, with the show elements, but if they can put if they do put the Quinjet on the Spider-Man building and they are seeking aerialist so I guess it won't be the stunt animatronic but or maybe it will but they're seeking a, people to play Spider-Man in a show above that in that same show building that's been confirmed so I feel like these interactive elements and also they said I read I think the LA Times said they're gonna have the same thing with the app the Play Disney Parks app where you can go ahead and um you know, do little experiences with them. I think that will make it I'll really elevate the land. Hmm. Avengers theme. Uh, yeah, so, nice. So, <laughs> Avengers yeah. theme, little Star Wars. J Jalen, so you went to Galaxy's Edge, or did? It yeah, I actually, by coincidence, I went twice, not by choice, really. Hey, the first time I went with my grandparents, well, not my grandparents, really, but. Something like that. <laughs> and, <laughs> and then my mom called me and she was like, oh, we have a reservation too. So I was like, okay, I'm going with two different families, but that's okay. And the first time was better. The second time was like, okay, you guys are kind of boring. <laughs> 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 they, didn't, they didn't want to do anything. I'm like, all right. Okay. They didn't, they didn't ride the ride? 
I mean, they rode the ride, but they was like, they're not Star Wars fans. So they were like, what's, what's the point? I'm like, I'm not going to sit here and explain to you what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Well, you know, like, even what it, like my, my, my girlfriend, she hates Star Wars, which is funny because I'm, like I'm like a massive fan. <laughs> but she right. hates Star Wars. She thinks it's cheesy and corny. The acting is terrible. She's more into Marvel. Oh. The funny thing is we went into Galaxy's Edge, and she – loved it it was like her favorite thing i was like oh, she she really thought it was really cool so i think even if you don't love star wars i think you can get a lot out of the land it's pretty dope yeah then that's that's what i just, that's what you think they would be able to understand but no they don't but yeah my favorite thing out of whole galaxy's edge probably would be the ronto roasters those are freaking amazing and, <laughs> and just just being in the land like it's just it's it's de- you the way that they train them, train the cast members in that area, you actually feel like you're not in Anaheim, California. Like you're not in Disneyland. Like you feel like you're on the planet by two. Like they they make you feel like that. And and it's, it's I just they just they, they did a good job. They did a good job, just being in the land. And then they, really and and then they slightly mess it up when they tell me I can't wear a robe and act like I'm. A, Anakin Skywalker, <laughs> like Universe allows me to wear a robe if I want to be a wizard. I still don't get those rules, but because the approved rules look like the cast member more like the cast members than the things that aren't approved. It's interesting. <laughs> yeah, and um, what I'm really waiting for, I think the Rise of Resistance is having the same problem as Jurassic World. They're they just can't figure out their own technology. Yeah, I think you're right. I think there's just so much going on with that thing that it's uh, they're they're trying to work out all the kinks, you know. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hopefully, like, open soon. And it's the, I don't know why they didn't learn their lesson with uh, Forbidden Eye that if you build something that you know is high end technology that's probably going to be able to control itself, maybe you should consider doing it, even though you're gonna know you're gonna make money off of it. Like, you, like I don't know what they thought. We're gonna build this massive ride with never before seen technology, but we don't know how to use it. So it's gonna take more time to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's it, it's crazy. I hope it opens up soon. I mean, I, the rumors right now are like September to like November. I mean, it's pretty out there, but we'll see. Yeah. You know, hopefully, yeah, hopefully we'll get a D23 update on that one. Yeah, because we know the ride is done. They just, yeah. like like you yeah. said, they're working out the kinks. Yeah. But hey, it's better than like a, a, as great and beautiful as Hagrid's is. You know, that one's breaking down all the time and having to open later. So might as well wait instead of those yeah. that are going over there in Orlando. You know, you know it's it's funny. Um, I'm actually going to release a video later today about the Hagrid's ride. But uh, I, I basically said, like, I, I think it's, I think Disney is handling uh, rise of the resistance better than Hagrid's because mm-hmm. it's better in my opinion to just say, Hey, look, you know what? It's not ready. We'll open it when it is then to, then to force something and to re- re- and to open it before something is ready. And then people go and they wait in line and they get frustrated and mad because you, you're waiting in line for nine hours and the thing is breaking down every 20 minutes, you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's not right. It's not right. And they backed off on the. They said they're going to use the virtual queue on Friday, but they backed off on that. So people are waiting in ten hour lines all weekend again, according to Alicia Stella. I guess the virtual queue wasn't ready or something. I don't know how it's not ready. It's just a little thing, but I don't. You know that's not cool. Yeah, <laughs> I see, that's the, the thing about of. Universal. They always have these tech rehearsals and let guests get on these rides, but. You should know, especially Universal Atlantis is a bigger theme park, that you're gonna have huge crowds to go one if they see they see a new ride is open, oh they're gonna go right to it. They, they, you know you're gonna have a lot of people. So if you know the ride's not ready, why are you like it doesn't make sense. You know you know the ride's gonna break down at least once or twice and you know the people are gonna be mad. Like you're just asking for it. Yeah, it's crazy. It, it, it's it's a guest relations nightmare. Like they're setting themselves up for it, you know. And, and I understand that they wanted to rush it out before Galaxy's Edge opens in Florida in August. But you know, at, at the end of the day, man, it's better to open it when it's ready than have all these issues. Right. 
Mm -hmm. Yeah. So now, now since people see this, they're gonna be skeptic if they're gonna even gonna get on it when it's uh, officially open. Now they're gonna be like, well, I don't know, is the ride gonna break down or what? Like this, like people are not gonna. I mean, they're gonna probably get a lot of people, but it's not gonna be. They're gonna be skeptic of whether or not the ride's gonna actually work. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah. So, and I back on this uh, Marvel Land. I forgot to mention that. My whole goal with Disney does, as long as we get, I told Ethan this too, as long as we get an e-ticket Avengers roller coaster attraction, that's all you need to do. Open the Spider-Man, open the microbrewery, open all that. But as long as we get an e-ticket Avengers roller coaster, I'm happy. Yeah, you know what, Jalen? I, I agree with you, man. Like, if, if they can deliver a top-notch Avengers e-ticket, I mean that would just that would just that would be the end all. That would yeah, be the end all be all. I mean they could do so much with that concept. It, it would just be it would probably be one of the best rides at the resort. Yeah, and it's mm. like there's no Universal has no competition. We have but at that point I'm taking sides with Disney because you know Disney. At that point we have Galaxy's Edge and we have Marvel Land with an Avengers e ticket attraction and Star Wars Land with a Star Wars Land e ticket attraction. So it's like what can you do Universal? What's your e-ticket attraction? Jurassic World. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Wow. They they would be they would be they would be killing it. I mean they they would oh, yeah. like that would be just like it would be just mic drop after mic drop like they they because I mean that would just be like they own so many iconic properties and then to have so many huge attractions like that based on these properties that are just knocking out of the park it would be really hard for Universal to compete with that for sure. Yeah. And we get Mickey's Runaway Railway. <laughs> yeah, without it, taking away any rides. Without taking any away any rides, that is just mind blowing. Now, big question here: After Marvel Land, just California Adventure only. What would you want them to improve next? I mean, it. It, in my opinion, I think once they get Marvel Land done, what what else do they need to do? Because don't forget, it's not that big of a. a land area like it once you build marvel land that's going to take up a lot of space they and need I to feel like a way goofy sky school and put the paradise gardens park and put crush's coaster over there that's what they need to do <laughs> but it's like before before marvel land before you know the retheme of uh pixar pier mm -hmm. it was more like the park was dead like it was not a lot to do and it's, at this point it's like to, to this day it's like okay well after you do the two or three each ticket attractions is like, what do you do now? But I feel like once they open Marvel Land, you're bringing two each ticket attractions in that land by itself. So then it's like, mm -hmm. you, you're you starting to level out the Disney side with California Adventures. Mm -hmm. Slowly, Disney's always gonna have like a little umph because they have a lot more attractions. But as far as each ticket attractions, they're gonna start to level out. And that's what you want. You wanna well, level out the, the thrills. That's what you, in my opinion. Well, here's my list. I do something with the Paradise Gardens Park. So if you have to take away the swings and the, all those spinny rides over there, especially Goofy Sky School, very painful. Take that out. Then, and Grizzly, take the take out the Challenge Trail, put it in the, like a Country Bears Dark Ride or something. That would be pretty cool. It doesn't have to be big. It could be almost on the scale of like a, like a Alice in Wonderland or like, you know, like one of those in Fantasyland, right? And then do something with the Hollywood backlog, which I know Chris definitely wants to improve. Oh, yeah. the East Chain Gateway, when that's been resubmitted in the fall, there'll be a whole bunch more space in the bus closet. Yeah, I agree, Ethan. I think the Hollywood backlog needs a lot of work. And then I would also like to revisit the Incredicoaster. Um, oh, yeah. The, the effects on that with the babies <laughs> on sticks and all that stuff, I, they, they can do better than that. So I would like to revisit that attraction and, and plus it out and make it a little more impressive than that is. But yeah, if they can do that and then the Hollywood back lot, you know, I, I think that DCA would really be a top notch park at that point, you know, with the Avengers Baby on sticks. <laughs> babies on sticks. <laughs> yeah. That, that I now that you say that, that's like okay. You could, I think they figured, <laughs> oh, it's in Credit Coast, so they're gonna love it either way. Why should we bother? And then they just like, <laughs> oh, what about this whole what do you think would be the best idea to bring the trunk closer to California? What, what would you move or take out, or replace? What would you do? 
Hmm. Well, I take away the subs, and I take uh, away Autopia. But I take that away either way, even though Tron kills it doesn't come. I just don't like those things. <laughs> Yeah, I, I would I would actually do the same. I, I would take away the subs. I would take away Atopia. I would also take away the launch bay. Maybe use that as the indoor oh. portion of, of the attraction. Um, oh, but but I would actually keep the submarine lagoon, even though that the subs are gone. I would keep the lagoon and just have the track go over the water. I, I just think it's kind of nice to have that lagoon in there, you know? Yeah, it really works with the Matterhorn. Yeah, it yeah. does. Perfect. And that 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 that's that's actually a great idea. Have the the outside portion of the track go over the lagoon. That's really that's really cool. With the mm. lighting effects at night, mm. that will look oh. awesome. And of course, you have to take all those people over tracks as they're kind of mashed up in there too. No. Oh, and then you can have like over the lagoon, they have like the like the world of color fountains, and like like as the coaster as the as the coaster goes by, like it like it goes. Oh, that's so cool. Um, freaking, freaking. Oh yeah, like I was like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Really but uh, oh, and then I uh, speaking of Tomorrowland, still take away those rock things and 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 move the Astro Orbiter uh, somewhere else. You know, I I remember hearing a rumor that they were trying to well, well they weren't trying to, but it was discussed that the Astro Orbiter be put back on top of the um on top of the rock or rocket rods, the um Omni Mover um cube thing right like where it used to be but they were like well that take too much time one and two is how it is how it's built now it's too heavy to for the the um the omni mover uh track cube to support it like it's too big and too yeah you know what i'm trying to say but yeah it, it's bigger than what it used to be so and that's probably part of the problem why they couldn't do that but that would be great because if they move the Astro Orbiter completely out of that space, then that gives you a lot of room to move and adjust stuff. And my opinion, I don't think Star Tours has a bright future. I don't think it has a bright future. I agree with you, Jalen. I, I think that it's, uh, it, it's, it's basically dead man walking at this point. I think that uh, whenever they decide to do the Tomorrowland, when they update Tomorrowland, I think Star Tours is going to go. And it should. You know, we have a whole land now dedicated to Star Wars. Put all the Star Wars need, over there. You know, we don't need it. Yeah, we yeah, definitely yeah, we don't need Launch Bay. That's, that's definitely. Oh, different. yeah. No, definitely don't need that. That is, oh, what a waste of space. Gee. You know, yeah. there's that. And then the whole arcade, Starcade thing that just sits there. Actually, the last time oh. I visited the park, which is a couple of days ago, when I walked past, because we went single rider for Space Mountain or Hyperspace Mountain or whatever, mm -hmm. um, we walked past through the exit and they had the Starcade doors open. And I guess they had, they were having like some type of like meeting in there. It was like they had a round table and there were like these very high end people in there sitting around the table talking. But the door was just open and there was like the, the Starcade was completely empty. Like you couldn't even tell that it used to be a Starcade. It was just empty walls, 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 walls. Mm -hmm. and the table just sitting there. So it's dead space, and I think that's where Disney needs to start paying attention. It's like you have all this dead space; you need to figure out how to remove it and or use it and put some work on it or something. But then again, I think I think they're just saving saving um, money and stuff until the actual time to actually start refurbishing stuff. Yeah, they'll probably they'll probably demolish most of that stuff when it comes time to redo Tomorrowland. They'll probably give us a whole like all new buildings, all new you know when they want to go in when they when they really get in there and start working on it. A mm -hmm. lot of stuff probably isn't going to make it. Yeah, and yeah. besides the the I mean I like Pizza Planet. I like how they did it. You know, it looks nice, but I'm kind of like a original guy, and I love Pizza Port. You know, that's my favorite restaurant. So. They they starting to I think they they're starting to give too much attention to Pixar in Disneyland. Yeah, it needs to be like if Pixar appears in California Adventure, that's where all the Pixar needs to go. Now, like they need to recognize that these properties that you're setting around the park, they need to go to a specific spot, not just scattered around. Because, like you said, if Star Tours, I mean, if we have Star Wars Land or Galaxy's Edge, Star Tours and 
Blanche Bay needs to go because all the Star Wars stuff, all the Star Wars stuff, you can yeah. see all that in Galaxy's Edge. You don't need that in Tomorrowland. We can have Tomorrowland. If you take, if you just take those two attractions out alone, that's so much more room to build another e-ticket attraction. Exactly. Poster. <laughs> so yeah, like, you know, and now Pixar, you literally spent almost a month to revamp Pizza Port to Pizza Planet. When that's Cal for Adventure has all the Pixar stuff, why would you bring Pixar back over here? Like we don't need. And that. you mentioned you mentioned Pixar, but it's more so, uh, yeah, Pixar, but also more so Toy Story. As you know, look at Tomorrowland has two Toy Story things: the Pizza Planet, the Buzz Lightyear. That rumor yeah. from Disney World about the Toy Story show taking out the country very generally. It's more they love Toy Story. They just want yeah. To and there's the Toy Story preview in Tomorrowland as well. Yeah, you know what, Ethan? It, it, it's, I don't know if you saw my tweet about that, but. Yeah, it, I did. I was like, I agree. Lots of Toy Story everywhere. It's everywhere, man. We have, we have the Buzz Lightyear and the, um, the, the, the Pizza Planet over in Tomorrowland. Then you go to DCA. And then you have the uh, the Midway Mania, and it's like how many? And then you go to Florida, and there's a Toy Story Land, and then there's rumors of that marionette show. I don't know if that's true or not, but the the rumors out there. There's just so much Toy Story stuff. I mean, uh, <laughs> Disney yeah. has every franchise you can possibly imagine with Marvel, Star Wars, Pixar, even their own library. Before they even bought everything, even the, just the Disney library is is vast, you know, and they. Yeah. Keep going back to the <laughs> same <laughs> movies every single time. And meanwhile, Lion King, which is which was one of their biggest animated films of all time, still doesn't have an attraction. Still doesn't have an attraction. Yeah, that, yeah, it has like, you know, like shows and stuff, but it needs a proper dark ride. Yeah, I agree. That that definitely needs some work. I mean, you could you couldn't even you can even expand an adventure line as small as I think they need to work on that venture line. I, I think they, that needs to happen. Because it's, it's, I mean, I mean, I don't know. That, what I do know is they do need, in uh, Animal Kingdom, that dinosaur attraction. I mean, I love dinosaurs and all that. They need to revamp that to be a, a Indiana Jones, like what we have out here. Oh, because yeah. That would mm. be so perfect. Like, it fits everything over there. Mm-hmm. Yeah, th there was rumors for a while. I don't know how credible they were, but a lot of different outlets, um, you know, were talking about a possibility of an Indiana Jones land opening at Animal Kingdom, which I think would be pretty awesome. Yeah, I mean, if they put the same amount of money and love into it like they did Galaxy's Edge, that could look really, really cool. Yeah, they, mm -hmm. and they could and they could work that out, and they could open it the, around the same time as the Indiana Jones Five movie is supposed to come out. And it just worked out perfect. Perfect advertisement for your movie and for your land. It was just perfect everything. You just make so much money. Like as if they don't have it. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, those rumors flip flop to uh, Hollywood Studios now. They want to put that Indiana Jones mini land in uh, Hollywood Studios. <laughs> uh, interesting little part that thing is I love it because of Tower of Terror, but I, I still find it funny how they took away uh, the great movie rights that put in the. <laughs> The Mickey thing when they only have like six attractions over there, and well, the famous Toy Story Land. Well, I think that just um, that was overdue too. I think having a Mickey attraction, he's like the the face of Disney, really, and he still hadn't had an attraction all these years. That was overdue, and I mean mm -hmm. they they figured it out. They figured you know we could just replace this one. It doesn't get the same attention as any of the other rides. We could just take our great movie ride and put the keys in the And, but see, that's the thing. Like in Florida, they have so many, so much space that I find it so funny when they replace a ride because they can just go into their parking lot and, you know, do what we did here and build a parking structure to expand something. But they're so busy, they always, Almost all the parks are replacing something. I find it, and then we we don't replace anything really. So I think it's really funny how that works <laughs> out. <laughs> yeah, it, it is kind of funny. It is kind of interesting. Like, yeah, we didn't lose anything for Runaway, Runaway Railway. We didn't or Galaxy's we, Edge. Or, or Galaxy's Edge. We lost a petting zoo. Oh, big deal! Yeah. You know, like exactly I, in a barbecue restaurant. In a barbecue yeah. restaurant. Yeah. But but we gained Ronto's Roaster, so it's a win. <laughs> yeah, win win. <laughs> 
And we got we got the petting zoo, even though the petting zoo is kind of scary, you know, with the beheaded uh, creatures in the the store. That was yeah. like, that. That's our that's our petting zoo. That was them recognizing, you know, that there was a petting zoo here. You know, very, very funny, very interesting how that works. I wonder uh, if we'll if they'll continue to lose things and we'll continue to just gain things. <laughs> uh, we definitely know how to work with space over here. And then again, you got to think about it too. I don't think Hollywood Studios. I don't think they've fully figured out how to make that a really good park yet. I don't think they figured that part out. I think they're trying. They're trying everything they can, but it's it's still my least favorite out of the four. I still put that at the bottom. Like I I go last. I go there last. Yeah, what well, is the smallest? And it has an interesting awkward layout type of thing. But uh, you know, I hope they'll find a way to like the Indiana Jones area and stuff to improve it, uh, make it have at least more attractions than Universal Studios Hollywood did. But, uh, yeah. yeah. Um, I was about to say, I was going to say something. Oh, you, you lost it, didn't you? But, oh, speaking of that, what is your favorite and least favorite Walt Disney World park, even if you've never been there? Um, yeah, I, ha I haven't been. I want to go. I'm planning on going soon. Um, but from what I've seen, I, I think I, I would be the most interested in Epcot and Animal Kingdom. Um, Magic Kingdom yeah. and Hollywood Studios just kind of like, I, I feel like our Disneyland is like, it just seems like it's so much better than Magic Kingdom. And then Hollywood Studios, like Jay Lynn was saying, was like, is kind of, it's kind of lackluster. So uh, Epcot and, and, and Animal Kingdom is where it's at. At least that's what it seems like from before going. Those are the two that I think are, are the ones. You are hitting the nail on the whatever you would say. But that, that is my type. In order, it'd be Animal Kingdom, Epcot, Magic Kingdom, and then Hollywood Studios. And like you said about Magic Kingdom, our Disneyland is definitely better. I mean, they're getting Tron closer before we do, but it's like uh, we have we have a lot of other things too. <laughs> well, we have, we have we have Indiana Jones, you yeah, know. Exactly, we have Matterhorn. You don't, you know, exactly. you don't have Matterhorn. And we have the better pirates. Yeah, and there it's a small world. Q is indoors, and they don't have the big facade like where we have. Yeah, it literally it's a small sign that says it's a small world, and you walk into a show movie. That's it. Mm -hmm. And I don't and like their music on Splash the, Mountain. It's too country for me. And it's in the middle of fantasy. Like, it's it's considered one of, like, you know, when you go in our fantasy land, it's like the all the dark rides, like, in, like, a little round, like, thing, and they're all put together mm -hmm. almost. That's how there's a small world. Is. It's put together with the other attractions. It doesn't separate itself as, like, the main event, like how it does in California. Yeah, that's crazy. Mm -hmm. That's crazy. And, and they're, well, okay. The only thing I'll give Magic Kingdom is that for one, they're getting Tron closer before we do. For two, their Splash Mountain is you sit next to each other. You don't sit in front of each other. Oh, okay. that's, yeah, that's, I mean, yeah, I, I don't I, like I, that. I don't know. I, 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 I really like don't it. like that. I, you know, also, and again, their music on the Splash Mountain, it's the same song, but it's more of a punch. I like this New Orleans jazz type of stuff we have here. But, the theirs is over there is like kind of too bluegrass country for me. I don't, oh, yeah. Not feeling the Splash Mountain at all. And the whole sitting side by side, you no, know, ours looks like actual logs. Like if you look into a forest, if you were to cut up a log or eat it, it's like briar rabbit. <laughs> you know, I feel like you wouldn't, it would be, those are too wide. But um, I don't know, I, I feel it's more, I don't know. I feel like going down, because when you go down, the drop, right? Since, you know, if you, like, laws of physics, if you go, like, more, like, you know, um, like, In narrower, I feel like you're going a little bit faster, it feels a little bit faster, versus, you know, wider. I'd say that's why I feel like when I go down, like, Jurassic Park's drop, it doesn't feel as fast, or, Paul, even though it is, then Splash yeah. Mountain, because I'm sitting in a wide boat, so, you know, like, some laws of physics or whatever, but Splash Mountains feels more thrilling because I'm like, you know, by myself and I'm, it's like very narrow. So I feel like that's why I think I like the, the yeah, narrow. Definitely, it's definitely faster, but when you talk about Jurassic World, 
that that 85 foot drop you definitely feel that 85 foot drop <laughs> like it definitely set oh yeah you up. feel but it just yeah it's so like smooth versus like i don't know something about the know, something about the single file yeah you know and uh well you have you been on jurassic park yeah yeah i've been on, yeah i've been on it it's great it's a fun ride yeah so do, do you do you know can you kind of what i'm talking about like 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 splashdown feels like it's more thrilling because it's like you're it's narrower like a narrow drop. yeah and, and i think with splash mountain the logs are more they're, they're you're you're closer to the water it's it seems like it's a it's a it's a, it's a, it's a, well, it's a smaller vehicle and you feel more like at the water's level whereas like jurassic park you're in this big boat and you're yeah it's up like, higher it's yeah, it sounds like like a car versus a plane. Like if you were to do the yeah. same thing, you feel it more on the car. Both great rides. Though. Yeah, that's why it's right. Splash Mountain. And also, the Splash Mountain at Disney World. I don't like the look of their mountain. I don't know if I'm being biased or not, but man, yeah. our mountain is more like forced perspective be because yeah. like our has that big log and theirs has the log at the top, but it's, or a tree branch. What, what's at the top? A tree branch of the mountain, or is it a log at all? But it just looks better. I mean, way better. A lot of people like Splash Mountain Disney World better. Though. That's and, because um, of this world. One thing I want to talk about too: this Guardians coaster. I'm hearing that it's going to be something, something special. This Guardians coaster that's coming to Epcot. And that's another thing that you know, Hollywood Studios is trying, but Epcot is just like, oh, hey, look, we're we're pulling away from you. We're building a Guardians coaster. Come catch us. <laughs> yeah it looks pretty cool there's been some pictures online of like that you know that you can see like inside the building and and uh i guess it was like the launch hill it's like yeah. straight up i mean yeah, it, it looks crazy up. did you see that ethan yeah and there's and there's uh rumors that it's a it's going to be a, a backwards launch and then you quickly turn and you know have the storytelling vehicles and then so you're apparently going to launch backwards and kind of turn to the left into the first show scene so that was super super cool but yeah that thing is like shoo, like a near crazy like, that's, i wonder how fast that thing will go like that's incredible right it's gonna Ooh, be that that opens in two years yeah yep 2021 they're taking, they're taking their time i wonder if the avengers will be something similar where yet kind of Let's see. i'm gonna look it up right now back. Like, you know, let's see what the, the rumors are hot right now. Let's see what's going on. Like, you know, <laughs> that'd be pretty cool. I mean, wow, I don't know what the show building won't be that tall though, because a massive 10 story show building in uh, California Adventure will be pretty imposing. Yeah. Oh, that's, okay. So I forgot that Disneyland Paris is getting it. Their Avengers theme coach, and it's already been announced and everything. They're getting that way before we are, I guess. Oh yeah, because wow. the, the Paris one, they're just gonna, they're rethemed the Rock and Roller Coaster to Avengers, so that's why it's gonna open next year because they just have to they just have to swap out the Aerosmith stuff with the or the No Doubt stuff with the Iron Man. So I found but, a leaked concept art and model reveal. And, but speaking of Paris, did you see their original plans for their Spider-Man ride? They looked absolutely incredible. Yeah, yeah, I did. Changed and into whatever they're getting now, or the Midway Mania. Do you think? Uh, no, I hope. I don't know if those blueprints are for our, us too, but I hope at least it's not, like I said. I hope we're still swinging. I'll go. Yeah. I'll be Midway Mania. I, I hope I hope we're swinging. If we're not if we're not swinging, I hope that it's at least a unique enough experience that it sets itself apart from Midway Mania. I mean, here's the thing. In all fairness, the ride systems don't always make the attraction in and of themselves. Like if you take Small World and you take Pirates of the Caribbean, they mm -hmm. technically both have the same ride system, but the experiences are completely different. Yeah, if they can do the Midway Mania technology with Spider Man and have it set itself apart from that in some way, however they can do it, then I'll be open for it. I'm down for that, you know. 
if they can manage to, 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 to wing it and get it to where it's a unique enough experience, I'm all down for it. But if it's just going to be, you're sitting in a car and you're just, you're just like this with the web thing. And it's like literally the same <laughs> ride. I'll be very disappointed. Very disappointed. Yeah. They got to bring, they got to bring their game a little bit, you know? Yeah. yeah that'll I was be. thinking that same thing. I was thinking that same thing. Yeah, that would be a that'd be that'd be pretty bad. I I'd probably go on that once, and never go on it again. <laughs> how sad that would be. <laughs> and I like how I like how they're what they're doing with each uh what, all the all the parts that are getting this land have a different character, um, a different um superhero focus. Like uh, me, uh and we are getting us in Paris are getting are focusing on Spider Man, so we're getting the Spider Man attraction and hopefully Avengers attraction. I promise you, if they do all this and we don't get an Avengers roller coaster, I'm gonna be upset. Yeah. But, yeah. <laughs> but me too, me too. It's gonna be yeah. We got to get that Avengers roller coaster, and hopefully a D23 they make that official. Hopefully we get you know some kind of announcement or concept art or something for that. Something. Yes, these uh, news on this is painfully low, little. Yeah. Telling. Yeah. I oh, like, okay. can't so, even tell us what's on the Spider-Man thing. Like I hate it. <laughs> It's too. It's yeah. too secretive. It's too secretive. Yeah. So so opposed supposedly, we have Spider Man. Paris has Iron Man, and Hong Kong has Ant Man, which it all makes sense because they just. Op- I think Hong Kong just opened their Ant Man attraction, and all it really is is Buzz Lightyear, but Ant Man. So it's like yeah, that's just- terrible. So I can't believe they did. I can't believe they got the short end of the stick like that. At least they're making up with their <laughs> Avengers thing. Cause- yeah. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Well, well, guys, I, I got to get going. I got to go back to work. But uh, thank you so much for having me on. I appreciate it. You're welcome. Definitely. Come on anytime. Oh, nice to meet you, man. Nice to meet I'm you, Jalen. Looking forward to seeing you meeting, uh, doing this again. Yes. Definitely. definitely. Let, us, let us know when you, when you start your channel and stuff, man. We'll do a lot of collabos and, you know, it'll be fun. All right. Yeah, yeah, for sure. All right. Well, have a great day, guys. All right, see you later. See you later.